Moving on to question 11. <clears throat> so again, we've got to read the question carefully, making sure we know what we're being asked, which of the following statements is not correct. So all of them should be correct except one. A, normative theories relating to ethical issues in business look at different ways we determine what business people should do. Okay, so the key word for me here is what business people should do because it tells me that it matches normative theories, right? Normative theories tell us what we should do. So I actually think this answer um, is correct. Okay, that, that, that's not what we're after, right? We're after the not correct one. B, all ethical theories will always lead to the same conclusion as to whether an action is good or bad. Well, actually, I know that that isn't true, right? Because we get different answers when we use some of these different normative theories. So I, I don't think that one's correct. I'm going to check to make sure I haven't misread something, but I think that's incorrect. C, ethical issues in business can be examined at three different levels. The individual level, the organisational level, and the systemic level. Yes, that's true. I mean, a lot of our models are about the individual level. We also has, have kind of those distributive models, which can be applied for, let's say, how you pay in an organisational at an organisational level, or even how an entire country or system works. So I think that's true. There can be some overlap between ethical standards and customs. Yes, that's true, right? We learnt what ethics is and what it's not. Ethics isn't exactly the same as, as customs, but there can be an overlap. E, religion and ethics are connected. Now that's, that's true, they, but notice it's not saying they're the same thing, just that they're connected. And for adherence to a religion, so someone who follows a religion, it can provide a justification and motivation for their moral choices. Yes, so religion's a different way of looking at it and you can be used to justify your moral choice. But it's not saying they're the same thing, right? So I think that that's true. That's true as well. So again, I come back to B is the answer that's not true that answers our particular question. B is not correct. Question 12. The Australian Constitution sets out how legislative power is shared between the federal parliament and the various state parliaments. The three types of powers set out in the Constitution are, ah, well, I know without looking even at this answer, it should be exclusive, concurrent, and residual, and anything else shouldn't be in there. So, A, executive, concurrent, and residual, incorrect, no such thing. Exclusive, concurrent, and legislative, no, no, that's not the three. Exclusive, concurrent, and residual powers. Yes, I think it's that one. Let's double check. Executive, state, and residual powers. No, that's incorrect. So our answer there, how power is distributed or shared between the federal parliament and the state parliaments is based upon exclusive powers, which are held by the federal government. Concurrent powers, which are held by both, but Section 109 says the federal government, um, the federal legislation will override um, the state legislation. And residual powers, right? So that's the stuff that isn't mentioned in the Constitution that is left with the states. And the federal government doesn't have any power over residual powers areas. Okay, so C is our answer. Question 13. Which of the following statements is correct? Okay, so I'm looking for the correct one. Distributive justice ensures that every person is treated equally before the law. Hmm. No, I don't think that that's actually true. Distributive justice is just we've got a just way of distributing. It doesn't mean that uh, things are distributed equally. It doesn't mean you're going to be treated equally before the law. They're different concepts. The veil of ignorance is another way of saying we cannot accurately predict moral consequences. No, the veil of ignorance, you'll remember, uh, is what Rawls used uh, as his thought experiment. And it meant to mean that a person who's deciding what world they want to come, to come up to has to pretend that they don't know where they're going to end up in it. Right? It's got nothing to do with predicting moral consequences. So that's wrong. A society in which there is inequality is definitely an unjust society. 
No, actually. Uh, that's, we, we know that the libertarian view and Rawls's view allowed under certain conditions inequality. So inequality is not the same thing as, as an unjust society. A society in which there is equality is definitely a just society. Again, that depends upon our theory. So, you know, a libertarian view, it depends upon how you got that equality. And they would argue the other way. If we have to take property off one person and give it to another to get an equality of outcome, then that would not be just because those people wouldn't be entitled to, this, to the stuff, so to that redistribution. So that's not true either. So I actually think the answer is E. Right? None, none of those appear correct to me. Okay. Question 14. Which of the following statements is a problematic consequence of ethical relativism? Okay, so what's this question asking me? It's asking me about the topic of ethical relativism. Okay, so can things be ethical in one situation and not another or for one person and not another? And it's asking me what's a problematic consequence? Okay, so what's a problem that arises if we adopt ethical rel relativism? Okay. If ethical relativism is true, we cannot criticize others' practices. Well, that's actually true, right? Because we're saying everything's relative. So what basis do we have to judge the other act? There's no absolute ethical position, which means we shouldn't really be criticizing others' practices. We have no basis to do that. If ethical relativism is true, we can determine right or wrong simply by reference to our own culture. Now, I know that culture is different to ethics, but that is true, right? Because it says that what might be right in one culture is wrong in another, and that therefore we can't criticize what occurs in, in, cult, in a different culture um, because that may be ethical for them. So that's, that's true. Um, it's a problem of ethical relativism. If ethical relativism is true, there's no possibility for moral progress. Well, that's necessarily true as well, because how, what are you progressing towards? Progress implies that there is a correct moral position, that something is right or wrong, whereas relativism says, you know, that anything can be right. It just depends. Um, so you can't progress either as a society or as an individual. So it really seems to me that D is our best answer there. All of these statements are problematic consequences of ethical relativism. They're all problems that occur if we accept the idea of ethical relativism. Question 15. Groupthink refers to a situation where management of an organisation clearly communicate a set of goals to all employees. Now, groupthink is about where everyone's agreeing with each other and they think the group is morally superior, so I don't think it's that. Employees unquestionably accept the views of organisational leaders. Hmm, that sounds like it could be, but it doesn't really sound like a group thing. It sounds like you're just conforming to authority there rather than a group action. Right and wrong are determined by reference to what different groups of people think. It's kind of got to do with what, with what your group thinks and you conform to your group. So it's not reference to different groups. So, so no, it's not, it's not that one. Groupthink refers to a situation where pressure to conform leads to an irrational decision being made. Hmm. Okay, so notice in B, it might not be about an irrational decision compared to D. So I actually think groupthink is about a bad decision or an irrational decision. And it's because people don't speak up and they conform. So I think the best answer for us here is D. Okay, D. So again, why don't we uh, take a little bit of a break here?